Hello and welcome to Everything to Guppy, the podcast where we talk about all the things in the Binding of Isaac. You know how this works. Come on, this is like episode 600 something, I think. Although the counting on the episodes is weird because we switched from four a week to one a week, but they're longer. I'm William Hughes and I'm joined as always by insert intro joke here, Gary Butterfield. And Gary Butterfield here. I'm here to let you know that we've been blazing through these monsters and it is time to slow down. Gary, do you feel like we've been maybe going a little too fast with the monsters? And too furious. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah. And Furiosa in theaters soon. Oh, thank goodness. I can yeah. watch that. Yeah. I'm so excited to once again be massively out of pace on a movie by only thinking it's okay. Yeah. Welcome. Welcome back. Uh, yeah. To that like, feeling. Uh, I remember watching Mad Max Fury Road and being like, oh, good. I'm in I'm in touch with other human beings because I'm going to like this uh, fun, uh, completely uh, meaningless action movie. And then walking out of the theater and just like everyone was screaming and doing religious <laughs> poses. Fire and like, yeah, yeah, there was a lot of self-immolation. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the, the car tipping was excessive. Yeah. It was like somebody won a basketball game. It was uh, in, a lot like yeah. uh, our very own Portland Trailblazers. The Trailblazers. I don't know if I was living in Portland when it happened. Probably. I don't think Are, that movie's that old. Legitimate question for you. because I'm, I'm Gary, I love a legitimate question. Possibly tying together two will data points into a constellation, but I'm asking you if it's a constellation. Not one I'm of telling your you. bastard questions where we don't know who the father is. Yeah, no, no, no. no. This, 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 uh, father, this question was conceived in wedlock. This question uh, is not baseborn. We will not call this question John uh, question mark. Yeah, I don't know what what the Portland uh, bastard name would be. Um, the uh, like John Smoothie. Uh huh. Um, the uh, but um, do you like? Are you just not a big fan of like? So I think that that along with John Wick one when that came uh-huh. out, part of the reason why that had a big reaction was because they were very very confident competent practical effect you know filled action movies at a time where there was kind of a dearth of them sure and i think that's why they move the needle is that something that you are either not feeling uh the the need for as much like not feeling the fatigue for as much or just not that interested in i mean gary i I love a competently made practically shot action movie more than just about anybody i love it so much uh okay i don't john wick is a boring movie is the the big problem there uh the first John Wick is dull. Okay. Uh, no one ends up in a knife museum. No one is bitten by a dog. Uh, there are three really well executed action scenes in it. And then a lot of Willem Dafoe and uh, Keanu Reeves not knowing who their characters are yet. Okay. Uh, and I find it overly, uh, it doesn't have that little sense of, I feel like the later John Wicks maybe make fun of John Wick a little bit for how sad he is about his wife dying. Well, yeah, and, yeah, that, that's, and that's kind of what I mean, though. That's what I'm saying is in the absence yeah. of other things. Like, I understand sure. what it's missing compared to the other entries. But I also don't think the action in the original John Wick is that good. Having watched it relatively recently, I was like, oh, these are, this is, compared to John Wick 2, even the way, like, the shooting is, is shot is a yeah. lot less interesting to me. It's not there. Yeah, and then uh, and then Mad Max Fury Road. I was just like, I don't know. I don't care about a single one of those characters, even a tiny little bit. Uh, okay. Is the big issue there? Like, uh, what am I gonna do? Care about Mad Max? What am I gonna do? Care about Nicholas Holt? Get out of here! I mean, I I I can't care about Nicholas Holt. So I'm with you. Gary, with I don't that know one. why you're trying to make me care about Nicholas Holt. He's got he's, he's he, beast. He, he eats he eats the the spray paint and he yells uh random meme nonsense i i'm somebody who is very enchanted by both of those movies so th- you love this the random is, meme nonsense so much i i do love it i'm not trying to convince you of anything i'm just no you know, gary it's okay i'm i'm just mounting my I, defenses against the psychic attack you were launching on me all i have in my life is a series of sextants in which i try to chart a course destination will uh it, yeah. it, it is a whole uh yeah you know, set boys, a course for adventure yeah, I'm setting a course for adventure nonstop every Monday uh, from noon to one, basically trying to uh, check the star charts to see if I can get into the land of will. 
And like, again, Gary, here's the thing about Mad Max Fury Road is I liked Mad Max Fury Road a lot. Yeah. I just didn't name my kid a Morton Joe afterward. You should have, though. I did not leave that movie going, I have been transformed by the competently made car movie where uh, like, I was like, oh, oh my God, the bullet farmer. This is so good. I, that was me. That was me. Yeah. I was the one happily yeah, clapping you, at the concept of the bullet farmer. I just wasn't you rending think it's, my flesh. Yeah, you think it's good, but overrated. I, I don't care how it's rated. I'm just saying uh, well, I was out of step. You were saying you you weren't rending your flesh. You think that those you think that that was an inappropriate reaction? Not inappropriate. On my you part, did not have that reaction. On my part, it was an inappropriate reaction. Oh, uh, Okay. I it's I'm broken, Gary, and I like to note when I'm broken. <laughs> I think you're broken. I just think you. Didn't if like I wasn't broken, much. why didn't I like the movie enough? It's fine, man. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Are you admitting it? Are you fucking admitting the movie's only fine? No, I, God you know it. what? Imagine me at the steering wheel. I've got the sextant. No, no. Uh, I've got squee Can't and I'm, I'm just, uh, wait, who, wait, who's squee? Huh? Cool. And then I'm, I'm rapidly wait, you moving mean the wheel. Do you mean shmi? <laughs> yeah. You call him squee? <laughs> yeah. You say it's, it's Captain Hook and his adorable <laughs> little buddy squee? Yeah, Squee. Hey, Mr. Squee, let's go <laughs> hey, find Cap- that crocodile. So, Captain Hook is to Smee as Smee is to Squee. Squee is like oh, a smaller shit. version of Smee that assists him. Even cuter. Each cuter than the last. Each, yeah, yeah. It's it's a Russian nesting squeeze. Um, so if, if Smee is Bob Hoskins, then yep. who is who is Squee? Um, Bobby Hoskins, the smaller Bob or, Hoskins. What if it's Charles Adler? Voice of Roger Rabbit. Oh, I'll, I'll take that. Yeah. yeah. Or Charles Martin. And also and Mario. Ignis. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading about uh, the Who Framed Roger Rabbit books. Uh-huh. There it is. Uh, it's fascinating that they made that, you know, he made that book, that Who Censored Robert, Roger Rabbit. And then uh, the movie came out, and then he just wrote two competing sequels with the movie. Yeah. That have nothing to do with his book. Um, yeah, I think that's the way to go. Because the other thing that people do, like, there's... Definitely examples where the movie came out and then the author, like, just like Michael Crichton did this with Jurassic Mm -hmm. Park. The movie came out and he was like, fuck, people really like Jeff Goldblum. Guess he didn't die because he didn't die in the first one. Yep. Yep. Uh, That movie. I think that's a, that's a more cowardly path. I think so too. It's it's, it's also Michael Crichton, which way the wind is a giant coward, uh, but also which way the wind is blowing. Yeah. Don't call him a coward too loudly though, or he's going to raise our village. Um, because well, he's, again, he is very dead, Gary. <sighs> Gary, is he, did you not know Michael he, Crichton was dead? I keep forgetting Michael Crichton is dead. Like, I know he, every he, day he, I have to like read. I is dead. I wake up every morning and I just. I keep hanging around waiting for Michael. Ooh. Uh, that's okay. All, all right. All right. It's done. It's done. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Fun. I mean, I enjoyed every second of it, but I was just like encore. All right. I yeah. Forget Michael Crichton is dead. Forget Michael Crichton is dead. I keep waiting around, for Michael. Ooh. I keep asking myself if it'd be funnier if I knew the song you were doing, but I don't think so. <laughs> Nobody knows that fucking song. Great. Oh, good. I was, yeah. I, once again, I was like, ah, a song I don't know. The now, if you're a puppy listener this. and you recognize that, please let me know. Yeah. Send it to at Cole on Blue Sky. Yeah. At whatever the Blue Sky thing. At Cole at co-host. At um, Cole at, I don't know how to do Blue Sky addresses. Yeah. I don't, I don't like how the addresses work either. Um, What were we saying before I started? Oh, Michael Crichton, the giant who's going to raise our village. I mean, we He's can go dead. back a we can go back a little further back. <laughs> you were talking about Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Oh yeah, yeah. And no, before that's all that, I had to we say. were talking about why I didn't like Mad Max Fury Road as much as you did. Yeah, uh, yeah. So if Michael Crichton never comes back to life, we are fucked. Is basically oh, we've been talking I mean, a lot of fl- shit, and the twelve foot skeleton in real life will absolutely kick our houses down. We have been talking a lot of shit. Gary, do you remember that week of episodes where all we talked about was how shitty Sphere was? Can you imagine if Ronald Williams came back to life and haunted your ass? 
It's yeah. it's <laughs> it's coming. Probably could probably take him. I, you can certainly take him. He's short. Um, Gary, I would I would watch a movie about someone being haunted by Robin Williams' ghost, the ghost portrayed by AI. That'd be an exceedingly annoying movie. Um, an exceedingly <laughs> annoying ghost. Yeah, um, late night yeah. with the irritating man. Yeah, maybe it like played by French Stewart or something. Nope, AI. Um, oh, AI. Um, with it, with the uh, voice of AI and the charm of French Stewart combined, we would have the ghost. Gary, we got to be real careful about French Stewart stuff. That is McElroy territory. Ah, uh, fuck. Uh, Sorry, is he dead? Man. No. Is he not tall? Yet. Okay. He might be tall. He's got tall hair. Yeah, I've I've never seen him next to somebody who I know is normal height. So he could also I be mean, a he... giant. There are ogres amongst us. So you have to be careful. Like I think John Lithgow is very t- tall. Yeah, John Lithgow is one of the ogre people um, up there. At some point, Gary, you were captaining a boat with your little man, oh, yeah. me in order Squeak. to... Ch- ch- sorry. Yeah, I forgot. We Disney-fied it. Uh, to somehow... I'm charting Chart a course essence. on the constellation yeah. of Will data points. Uh-huh. Uh, just to try to figure out Will. Just journey to the center of the Will. You know? Yeah, I mean, there's no center, Gary. It's just a, a hollow black hole where uh, coffee and bad opinions go. I, You know what? I I, I, uh, unless I listened to your Retronauts. You did a great job. Oh. My little boy grew up. I love it. I Yeah, boy. Uh, <laughs> that's, a, <laughs> that's a lot of framing to... I, I okay. No, no, the framing, the framing is oh. so, like I appreciate the compliment, but we can both acknowledge that the framing was uh, question mark adjacent. Yeah, I was just trying to, but I my framing was a joke. I was hiding a real opinion in a jokey phrase. Gary, thank you for listening to the podcast Retronauts uh, and liking the episode that I was on. Sincerely, I think you did a good job. I think people should listen to it. Um, yeah, uh, I don't make any jokes in it. I don't think I might no, make there, like one there, joke. You make a couple jokes in it, like you you make funny jokes in it. Like I, I made yeah. a couple jokes, and it seemed like it wasn't a jokes room, so I I stopped doing the jokes. It wasn't a jokes room, but I I, I really appreciate you making the jokes. You know? I'm making the jokes. It's great. It's a really good episode. Uh, I I only listen. I I'm a patron of those guys. You know, I'm friends with them, and it's one of the longest podcasts I've ever listened to. Uh, my confession is I don't listen to most episodes because a lot of times they're talking about stuff I either know too well or I'm not interested in. Um, so it's good. We, it brought we me hit back. that sweet spot, uh, the Final Fantasy game that no one has played. Yeah, that, that I that I do not know and am interested in purely for haterade reasons. And so. you know no one has played it because Bob Mackey talks for a long time at the start about how he couldn't find <laughs> he couldn't anyone to talk any, to about Yeah, his 10th and 11th choices yeah. on the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, laugh out loud moment. An amazing uh, introduction yeah. to guesting did, on a podcast I've been uh, checking in on periodically for like 15 years. Did you have video on in that call? We did, yes. Okay. I, I'm imagining your face during that. Uh, I had a lot uh, of fun Gary, thinking about I got a po- I got a poker face. No, I know. Uh, your poker face. Joker 2. Coming soon. I, I, I'm sorry, Gary. Do you mean Joker Folie Adu? I do, but I didn't know how to pronounce it. Me, me either. I said it wrong, I think, probably. Uh, I, I, No one would know. I said I it said, confidently. Yeah, you said it. <laughs> you did say it confidently. God, Gary, you're cruising through these fucking minutes. monsters. Yeah, it's it's 14 I, minutes on the clock. Uh, reminder, we're in Monster Blitz, where we go yeah. through every monster in the Binding of Isaac and say at least a sentence about it. Yeah, and, and we're just, trying to do slow that. down. Yeah, one of my favorite bits is to count how many monsters we've done in an episode. Yeah. Challenge yourself null, by counting them null, in Roman numerals null. this time. Yeah. Do them in well, Roman there's numerals. no zero in Roman numerals, Gary. Oh, okay. No, no, that we've done so far for the entire Blitz. Oh, no, I meant just today's episode. I think it's funnier that we've done zero so far today. Yeah, but I want to hear how far you can go in Roman, Roman numerals. I mean, as far as you want me to go. Really? Uh, all right. Uh, Gary, you have... Listener, <laughs> I've awakened the beast. Put, th- put this one in the Gary column. I, I, I... I, 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 V, 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 I, V, I, I, V, I, 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 X, 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 I, X, I, I, X, I, 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 X, I, V, X, V, X, V, I, X, V, I, I, X, V, I, 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 X, X, 
X X X I X X I I X X I I I X X I V X X V X X V I X X V I I X X V I I I I X X X X X X X X X X I No, Gary, I fucked it up. I said forty one just then. Never mind. I'm sorry. Yeah. Start over. Um, now, Gary, we did. I did stop before I had to remember whether D or L was fifty. I think L is fifty. I think uh, L is forty. I think it's not. Be- it's no, absolutely not. They go in fives. Okay. Well, the reason why I thought maybe it was that because I uh, one of my buddies has a tattoo of the the number forty two because of Douglas Adams reasons. Uh huh. And I think it's in Roman numerals. I think it has an L in there. It does have so, an L in there. It's X L I I. Ah, I see. Because it's yeah. ten before fifty. And then two. Okay. Who's this gotcha. friend? Greg. <laughs> what kind of weird is Greg? Uh, old weird. Like I've known him since I was in fourth grade. Um, I... Yeah, real weird. He's got, uh, you know, the, the weird Douglas Adams thing. And then a weird, like he doesn't really, he's not religious, but he has this like mania for the iconography that is wrapped up in like a bunch of head stuff. And this, this, his words, not mine. Like he would say this. So he's got a bunch of... Like real strange religious tattoos on him. Okay. He's also incredibly feckened. Um, my man has so many kids. Uh, yeah. Just absolutely potent seed. Um, like at any given time, it is not surprising if he's expecting another kid. Okay. Um, and there are a lot of kids going on there. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Greg seems like a character. Yeah, he's certainly a character. He was going to come to my wedding, but then he said, it's a standing rule that somebody else's wedding is not my fucking vacation. And I was like, you know what? I respect that. I appreciate that. Um, yeah. You know? Yeah. You only get one vacation a year. You don't want to spend it. You want to go out with your family, your infinite, your ever growing super family. Yeah. I respect it. I just, I didn't get a tattoo to commemorate uh, the first woman I ever really loved dying. Mm-hmm. So I don't think I could get one to commemorate my shared love of Douglas Adams and Roman numerals. What if you got your shared love of the Hitchhiker's Guide text adventure, though? I do have a lot of affection. I was literally reading about it today, as I often am because of TV tropes. Uh, you know, I've never beat it's really that interesting. thing, right? You know that, right? Yeah, yeah same. Like, I yeah. also have never beaten it. It's Great game really to read obnoxious, about. but really fun to read about. Like, super fun to read about. You should get the entire text of it tattooed on your back. Like, Prison Break. Gary, you know what I've been thinking about right now? Is season dra- four, is- Zork. Yeah, Zork. Uh, I, I shouldn't talk about this because you're just going to tell me not to talk about it because it's spoilers for a recent game. But uh, are, have you read anything about Dragon's Dogma's, Dogma 2's Dragon's Plague? Uh, only that people are mad about it. Um, they and so I, it mad about it. It won't hurt my feelings if you talk about that like a mechanic thing. Like, okay. I will probably play Six- that at some point, but I'm not in a rush. because 60 Capcom seconds on the clock. Uh, everybody jump ahead if you don't want to hear about this. Yes. Imagine we talked about the Globin. Yeah, but uh, we will actually have to talk about the Globin. So 60 seconds from now. Okay, so it's a disease that your pawns can get. Uh, either by getting grabbed by dragons in a fight or by uh, getting it from other pawns that you, like, hire. Okay. If... You let it progress, and you, like, miss the signs. When you go to sleep at the inn, your pawn nukes the town. Well, that's really interesting. Permadeaths the entire town, including the biggest city in the game, full of quest givers. And you get a screen saying, if you were more observant, this wouldn't have happened. That's the most interesting thing I've heard about that game so far. Yeah, I didn't hit it in my review play. I got the plague at one point, but my, the pawn died. So okay. it wasn't... And that you can like do stuff to deal with it. But it's insane. It's one of the craziest pieces of game design yeah, yeah. I've ever heard. That's really wild. Um, no, that sounds interesting to me. Like, yeah, I, I, don't like want to exper- I don't want to experience it, but I sure do like it. Okay, that's 60 seconds yeah. probably. All right. uh, what What's does the Globin glo- do? <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Get, um, gotcha. They uh they charge at Isaac. They're they're uh they're red bloody Isaacs mm-hmm. uh, that are dead. Uh, the big thing with these guys is they're tanky already, and then uh, when they die, they turn into piles of goo, which can regenerate. Yes, the you have to hit the piles of goo. This is really difficult because these guys will spawn in like multiples. Yeah, usually and, three or four of them at a time. 
and while one of them is goo, the other ones are still chasing you. So you are, uh, yeah, you're very unlikely. So when they come back from dying, they tend to have lower max yes. health. I was just about to say, like, I, I don't know for sure that that's true, but it feels like it is that they yeah. go down really quick afterwards. And I think that their goo phase also gets fewer hit points. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what often happens is you will like shoot one, it turns into goo, and then you try to hit it, but its fellows are running towards you and blocking the shots. So you're kind yep. of just like milling through several of them, which isn't that bad in a room where there aren't other enemies and where there aren't like obstacles because these guys move pretty fast too. Yeah, but not nearly as fast as the the gazing globins, mm -hmm, who are cute, who are cute and move like three times as fast. Gary, I'm uh, gonna make a wild assertion that eyes make things cuter. Things without eyes are less cute. Like I would generally agree with that. Okay, good. G uh, giving Gary, something an once, eye is a way to make it cute, even if you just put it on anything. Yeah, that's there's a whole industry based on that exact concept, oh. Gary. Every time I take a shower, I wait for my window to fog up and I draw uh -huh. a perfect ba bomb on my window in the fog. I've been perfect. doing it for like three or four months. Okay. And it does not become cute until I add the eyes and it becomes the cutest thing in the world. I'm okay. getting really Has good your at wife it. commented on this yet? They're not there by the time she gets there. It's ephemeral, beautiful art that just fades. Oh, it's it, just it for just you? Away. It's just for me. Yeah. So you're making art it, just for you? <clears throat> yeah. I wrote po write poetry for myself. It is, uh, it's, it's, uh, in the fog. So it disappears as soon as it, uh, dries out in there. Yeah. That's disgusting. Yeah. Art is to be shared via podcast. The Max it's One the Drive currently going. Uh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. And it might actually that, not be. This one's put on, that a, in a on fucking delay. Can. What? Um, it's not that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Look, the, if you're uh, going to mention French Stewart, you got to give the McElroy some money, buddy. I am not giving them a fucking dollar. Um, <laughs> the, the, I'll have my donation <laughs> and put your name on it. No. <laughs> the, uh, I'm going to donate to evil charities in their name. Gary, um, name a couple of evil charities for me. Hamas. I don't know. Okay. I, I, All right. Okay. <laughs> well, Guppy has finally made a statement on the cause of conflict. Great. You were waiting for it, listeners. Yep. Everyone's um, been just like, which side are they on? What do they think? Um, what do they think about Jonathan Glazer's Oscar statement? I thought it was good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I loved him in Delocated. Um, I know that's not the same yeah. guy. Uh, could, could be. It could be. He was, wearing, be. he was wearing a mask in that. Don't know what he looks like. Yeah. You know what? Fair. Uh, Y'all got jammed. Uh, there's also <laughs> the uh, Dank Globin. So we didn't uh, say the Gazing Globin oh, yeah. moves faster. Much faster. Like three times as fast. Uh, makes them harder. The Dank Globin. Um, this one hey, uh, is a man, leader. Hey, I'm Dank. He's super Dank. Super Dank. I, hey, I dank. got an on it. I got, God, fucking the wiki. Sometimes the fandom, just the little video right now. It's a, uh, the honest trailers for coming to America, oh. which means <laughs> the new one or the old one. I don't entire. I think it's the old one. Okay. Uh, it's, uh, every now and then there'll be, uh, some nude women in it. So gotta go there ahead were, and, uh, there were some boobs in coming to America, but, but I'm saying like in the little honest trailers, there are some women who aren't wearing clothes, but they do have black bars over their, uh, their, you know, scandalous parts, the parts yes. that society hates. Yes. I'm a feminist. Yeah. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> like, say it a little louder for the people in the back. Gary, um, what's the Dank Globin? What's, what's Dank Globin do, man? Uh, I still, uh, so he's later, he does a full heart of damage. And when he becomes a pile of goo, uh, he creates a spider. Uh, and leaves this puddle of bl slowing black creep. Um, yeah, and so we'll just a little bit more problems, basically. Yep. But by the time you're meeting this guy, your DPS is probably high enough to not make him a problem. I'm also going to say I don't care about slowing creep in this game. It's it's very rare that it does anything to me. Like, I like using it against my enemies. Yeah. Uh, but it's very rare that I care about it for me. God, your enemies list just keeps getting bigger and bigger. Man. It's really huge. It overlaps with Nixon's a lot. And it's uh, it's like Nixon 2X. Give, Gary, give me one name that is on your enemies list and Nixon's enemies list. Oh, um, Deep Throat. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, you mean the X bit, the X Files character, though, right? Yeah, very much the X Files character. That guy's got to go. Gary, you um, like that? Uh, I don't want to tell me if I'm I'm encroaching. You like that X Men '97? I really liked it. Good. I loved it. 
Um, really, really happy. It felt like a miracle. Like, it's just go. Like, oh, like, this is actually really good. Uh, beautiful. Really liked it. Uh, you know what I happens in the third episode? No. Okay. Um, yeah, no, I'm definitely going to watch it. Me and Jeremy are going to talk about it. Um, Liv watched it. Liv loved it. Uh, I, I decided to watch her two. We watched two episodes of the old series. Uh-huh. Uh, to cure up, but I, you know, I know Liv, so I wasn't trying to find like serious ones. I was trying to find really goofy ones. Sure. And boy, uh, if you if you want just like a, a lo- couple low cards, um, we watched the one with about Gambit's family, about his ex wife, okay. uh, the externals. That's real weird. And then uh, we wish you a Morlock Christmas, which is one of my favorite episodes of anything um, in the world. It is a ludicrous cartoon. It sounds like a really good cartoon that Gary, you strongly recommend everyone watch. I do. I certainly do. Gary, I was going to do a Josh Groban joke at some point for all these Globans, but then I realized I don't know a single jo- The only Josh Groban song I know is Your Body is a Wonderland, and he didn't do that. <laughs> They're all called shit like You Lift Me Up. Like, yeah, it's all called a- stuff like that. Is he the modern version of contemporary Christian artist Carmen? He is, except he's not Christian. He's like oh, contemporary he people up? Christian style artist but without actually making christian music i think he's married to is he married to cat no 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 that's uh andrew wk i think that guy married to cat denning but no that's andrew wk somebody cool is married to josh groban but i can't remember who um gary i, I mean let's 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 take a minute and find out who's who i'm gonna ask Google, we should who slow josh down. groban yeah. yeah it's a surefire way uh who josh groban married oh <laughs> married to uh Let's see. Uh, I don't think Josh Groban's uh, married, bud. No. Yeah, I imagine this. I think he was dating somebody. Let's look at his dating history. <laughs> sure. He's currently dating Natalie McQueen. What is this show we're doing right now, Gary? Because it's not the one I signed on for. I, he was dating Selma Blair for a while. Okay. And uh, dating Katy Perry. That's why I think I, I was thinking. Hey, of. And he did he, date Kat Denning. He, he I didn't did imagine date- that. He did it date Kat Dennings. You did yes. it, man. You remembered yeah. it. Uh, Who is one of the- she is like, mar- one of the hottest ladies of all time. The, I do uh, not care to uh, comment on the attractiveness of women with you. That is not a relationship you and I will ever have. Oh, we have it though. No, we really don't. I I've been speaking in code. Okay, okay, but I'm not going to engage with you on which celebrity women I think are sexy. Okay, that's fine. Because uh, I'm you you. a feminist. Yeah, motherfucker. Because yeah. you're erasing. Their sexuality, I get it. First wave feminist, I understand. Gary, um, uh, Carmen died in 2021. I can't remember if oh. that is before or after we talked about him a lot. I it, think it might have been <laughs> to the, to the, exactly the, the time. It's very night. Yeah, the day of, uh, oddly enough. I don't know that you didn't get uh, reincarnated uh, that moment. <laughs> sure. Uh, Gary, I am on the Carmen uh, contemporary Christian music artist Carmen's Wikipedia page, and this is a very exciting sentence for me. Can I read it to you? Yeah, yeah. Carmen's musical style has been described by Relevant Magazine as operatic (laughs) story-driven songs that often centered around cosmic battles between God and Satan, similar to Frank Peretti by way of Meatloaf. (laughs) (laughs) And that Meatloaf connection I never made before, but that's it. That's why I love him. He is, uh, I'm looking at the picture of him on Wikipedia. My man looks like a Sopranos extra. Like he is stocky. He looks like he's going to go do some enforcing to me. Yeah, no, he's, he's ready to, you know, uh, really take that witch's invitation, really get you addicted to Jesus. Now, Gary, uh, Frank Peretti unlocked a new memory for me. He was a Christian author. I absolutely read his big book, This Present Darkness, which is one of several oh. books I read while Christian about what happens with, when the rapture hits. Was it, is it good? Gary, I was 12, so it was uh, great. Actually, scary. is this one not a rapture one? I don't think this is a rapture one. I definitely read it, though. I remember the cover. There are not a whole lot of plots that they got. That stuff. God, Carmen has a lot of albums. Oh, um, yeah, Gary. Yo, uh, kids. Hero stories and songs in the Bible. Yo, kids. Lawrence the Cat, the Beatitudes. So do you get that joke, Beatitudes? No, so the Beatitudes, oh, Beatitudes. are yeah, no, yes. yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah. No, I get it. But this group is called, and then of course, Yo Kids Volume Two, the Armor of God. Oh God, <laughs> that one's just about a cool armor. And then Yo Kids, Lawrence the Cat, and the Bible. That one feels like it's a little less imaginative. And the Bible. 
Uh, Mission 316, which I assume uh, is named after Mission Impossible. It is. Look at the cover and the font yeah. and everything. <laughs> That's very much so. What's the lead single? I know we've done that. Like, I need you no, to he's, understand. he's fascinating. Like, yeah, I, I need the listeners to understand. There was a year of my life where I basically just listened to this man's Weird Al Yankovic <laughs> religious songs. <laughs> uh God, there's not. Oh wait, this one has uh, Post Mission Lamb 316 Jam. Has the, has the courtroom in it. I think we watched the courtroom. Oh video. yeah, yeah, the courtroom's really good. It comes right between Post Lamb Jam and Surf Mission uh, and then, on the track list. His last uh, album, which was good enough to get its own Wikipedia page, was No Plan B in 2014. Ah, uh, d- delightful double meaning there on yeah, behalf of this, uh, this Christian uh, artist here, with I'm sure very good politics. Um, uh, the, well, the last song it is just sure called The Flag. Yeah, just in general. That's my king slash radically saved. Oh, man. Uh, he had a song Hope called Loftist? Jesus Heal Me. Jesus didn't. What? Peace of the Lord featuring somebody named Hope Loftest. Loftus. I mean, Hope Loftus just, I think, might just be a person. Is that, but that's a real weird, very funny name for a religious singer. Hope Loftus? That sounds fake to me. Yeah. Uh, she's just a, like a, a blonde lady. Yeah, she's a worship singer. Is, her is the last name what's throwing you? Uh, the last name and first name together. It just sounds very fake. It I sounds like it, do- you know, it does you know? sound a little fake. Yeah, I can like uh, the Hope Loftus page on Facebook and follow her Twitter and Instagram from this page. Excellent. I get weird vibes from Andrew WK. Yeah. Well, he's like he's like a fairly hardcore Republican. Is he? I didn't know that. Yeah. Um, I yeah, never like, pay attention to his politics. Uh, I was mostly concerned with his dating life, but we shan't speak of that. Um, I wasn't really concerned with his dating life. I just don't know very much about him. Um, uh, yeah, he's just, uh, I don't know. I Anytime anyone's whole vibe is positivity, I assume that they're killing people in quiet. They might be. Yeah. Giants. Uh, huh? Gary, uh, you want to do a fourth monster today? I we, can, we got some time. What time is it? Oh, we're, we still got... we're past the half hour mark. Yeah, we can do four. Um, what about the curse globin? What about it? Uh, um, well, he also chases you. He also what does a full heart of damage. He also does a full heart of damage, uh, and he collapses into two piles of goo. Yeah, uh, so this can become a problem, Gary. Yes, I, I keep almost calling you John. I only talk to three people who aren't my wife. Yeah. If you, uh, if you call me John, I call you John because uh, when I'm on the streams, I'm in performance mode. Yeah. And performance will only talks to two people and he can't, he doesn't distinguish them. They're just the target. Yeah. No, no. I, we know me and the target, me and the other target. No, the human um, target, me and the other target. Talk- Ooh, Peter Milligan. Um, me and the other target have talked about it. Uh, I mean, that's these- poss- you did meet at my wedding. Shit. You might've talked about me. Fuck. Yeah. 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 No, we stay in touch. I, I, um, I assume I'm not interesting enough for other people to talk about. Well, that's that's a that's very contrary to your career and your uh, your performance goals. You know? I'm a you know I'm a Gary. I'm many things. I'm a I'm a walking contradiction. But most of all, I want people to know I'm a feminist. Yeah, louder in the back. Um, these guys, the little goo piles they turn into, have very few hit points, but they keep splitting. Yeah. Um, you usually run into these guys when you have high DPS, and I actually find these really satisfying to kill. Because they explode into a bunch of little guys and you just take them all out really fast. Yeah, they regenerate really fast, too. Yes. Um, I like this enemy a lot. Yeah, they swarm up uh, in interesting ways. Yeah, really good. And then we got the Black Globin, uh, who uh, does a full heart of contact damage, and he throws spiders at you when he takes damage. Yep. And he splits Um, into, instead of turning into a little goo pile, he turns into his own head and his own body. Yep. Which we'll talk about later. They are their own monsters. And then, Gary, uh, we have one that uh, we want to raid our sack. Is yes, that... very much so. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, clickety-clack. Raid our sack. Don't come back. Uh, this is the uh, skeleton one. Um, he walks towards you, turns into a pile of bones, regenerates a few uh, seconds, but his whole gimmick is uh, he only despawns if all of the clickety-clacks in the room are killed. So you have to kill yeah. them all at once. It's that old uh, that old gaming chestnut that I always, you know, mostly like. Like, you, you see this trick? Yeah. Like, you know, I, I mostly like this. 
Um, yeah, but it shows uh, up a lot. you know, watch, watch Defender, Defender Watcher. Yes, Throne Watcher. Throne, yeah, Throne, Throne Watcher, Defender. Throne Defender. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know that like you have to take them both out. Um, but it, it's easier in this than that because uh, they're a better designed boss and or a better designed character, and there aren't as many of them. They don't have as much HP. And they're not in the Dark Souls Two engine. Uh, yes, or both is... the Dark Souls Two end game. Um, Gary, would you? Do you think Mega Man would be good at going through Dark Souls? So early on, yes. Okay. Uh, ranged attacking is very overpowered early yeah. on in uh, every Souls and FromSoft game, and then it would fall off. Well, uh, but remember, Gary, difficult. he's getting new abilities as he kills bosses. But they're all ranged, just about, other than like the top spin. Like everything yeah, but, is well, but that's because he's fighting ranged robots in the Mega Man games. If oh, he's so going he would through gain. Dark Souls 2, oh, going Dark Souls two, he yeah, would just get the boss yeah. like special the whole weapons. Premise. The whole premise of Mega Man, yeah. I, guess, I well, there's two I different. Say. I wasn't thinking of a fresh Mega Man coming to Dark Souls two. I was thinking of Mega Man as we know him being transported into Dark Souls two with I Mega, mean, Mega Man. As we know him, his most inherent ability is his ability to absorb the attacks of his largest enemies. Um. um so no, I don't think he'd be very good because that would just be boss weapons that have, you know, move arts from the boss. I don't think it'd be boss weapons. I think it would be because a lot of times you're not getting the exact weapon from the boss. I think you get things like Duke Steer Frey's uh, big laser. You, that's what I mean. Like, or like not weapons, like the um, weapon arts, like whatever they called them before they were weapon arts. Um, well, I'm sure they didn't call them weapon arts, Gary. I don't remember the name of them before that, before Dark Souls 3, the, the thing that you uh, you could do. Like the special ability, the the R two or L two ability, when you're two handing things before that, you would just get those, and those always those aren't particularly good in Dark Souls two. Yeah, welcome to Bonfire Side Chat. I'm the other one. We're gonna discuss yeah. the Mega Man care the Mega Man class in Dark Souls two. That would be a really fun class though, like get a blue magic class or something like that. Like somebody who goes through Dark Souls two and just gains abilities as you kill things. I mean, blue magic is almost always a fun thing. Uh, the enemy yeah. skill materia in Final Fantasy Rebirth is not. You know what they did with it? That you don't absorb mm. attacks you've been hit by. You just do certain missions and add a new attack to the materia, and there's only like six of them. That's that's less tedious, but also feels a little bit less magical to me. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, like the like the fun I hated part of, like, grinding to get is hit that lets by you break shit. Yeah, yeah. I like I hated grinding for him. I hated it being like, oh, I have to go on this beach and fight enough adamant toys, you know, to get big guard. Like I hated the chore of it, but I like the feeling of it. Um, if that makes sense. Uh, but but no. what if you got uh what ability would you get from old iron king gary old iron king uh you know what a cool low-key ability to be would be uh to dive under the ground and come back other places like a teleport like that guy oh does. yeah that would probably break the, the video game pretty yeah early. that'd be pretty cool you can go clip through walls and shit speed run old iron king percent. i'm just saying that mega man i think would do a good job against uh throne watcher and throne defender he might do an okay job at them uh them specifically because they don't have he's any the, ranged attacks, he can keep out of out of range. He's the fighting robot, Mega Man. I like Mega Man. Uh, he seems like a. How big do you think Mega Man is in real life? Six foot. Six foot. What do you uh, think? I'm like way off, or uh, yeah. which direction? Uh, tall. I th- I think that he is like three foot. Okay. All right. I mean, you're going off. That's that's like canonical yeah. the Captain in. Yeah, or like Marvel versus Capcom. Like I'm going, sure. I'm going by that kind of stuff. So in real life, like one of the things about Mega Man that you have to remember is he's just a little guy. Yeah, but he's slouching is the thing, Gary. Yeah, Mega Man has horrible posture. He has he, such he bad posture, posture because he's a... He defeated Podcast Man and took his power. Oh, it's no. A... Oh, that's a fun idea. Uh, a Mega Man game where you start out really strong. I will but, kill all uh, of the only... Max Fun Network yeah. and take all of no. their powers. Gary, no. Gary, no. No. <laughs> the, uh, no, it's a fun idea. You start really strong and then you get all of the powers of the Max Fun Network and slowly depower as you take out the podcasters. You know? Gary, jealousy's a beautiful look on you. I, there's no je- jealousy. What do I have to be <laughs> jealous of? Um, the uh, There's there's nothing that I have to be jealous of. I'm living my dream job that I could not have imagined in my wildest dreams as a kid. We might buy a house. These are all things that I thought were not possible. I just don't think they're that funny. Um, so we'll, they can take our powers instead, though, if you want to take it off of Max Fun and make it us. I Mega would, I, I would love to find out what Mega Man gets when he kills me, because then I'd be dead. And that's the thing I want. I'm trying to think of that. 
he might just go to tallness as your most prominent feature in actuality other than your spot. That just might actually make Mega Man draw, grow twice as tall and be six foot tall. Gary, please don't blow up my spot. I won't. Never will. Or do we want to move on to a second class of monsters? Yeah, I think I so, we... Gary. I think okay. I think given that there's still uh, 20 minutes left on the recording, okay. I would say might maybe maybe one I, more class of monster. I just buddy. don't think we're gonna get through the flies. You know, so it's kind of I don't either. To but start. we don't have we get, to. Is the thing? No, we we can get through these uh, these these little guy these creeping guys on the ground uh, here, like the gas. And we can. Bag. Hey, Gary, we can even start in on the boom flies, buddy. Uh, we don't have to start and end <laughs> on categories. It makes them easier to remember, though. Well, Gary, I, mean, I know we don't have to. So does writing things down. Are you going to write it down? No. See, I'm going to try to remember. Hmm. Um, so say something memorable about it. I'll try. Uh, so God, we're not Gary, there there's yet. So many fucking, there's so many fucking monsters. <laughs> there are a lot of monsters, and we we and we are blazing uh, through them. Uh, the gas bag here. Um, this is just a little pile of mud and grossness. Uh, he summons the army flies. We talked about those. So those are the ones that march in formation, go in a line. And he's surrounded by a ring of toxic gas that'll hurt you if you stand in it too long. A rare uh, application of the poison effect on Isaac. Yeah, the poison um, fart effect. Yeah. Yeah, they don't use that very often. There are like uh, multiple gas clouds in this game. One that blows up, but one that'll hurt you if you stand in it for too long. It only shows up in the corpse, I believe. And added in uh, Repentance. It's a rare effect. Yeah. I watched my wife uh, play through the. I haven't gone to the corpse in a long time. Watched my wife play through it last hmm. night. A lot of enemies in the in that in that area. Huh? Yeah, I like the corpse. Um, it is a cool zone. Uh, I have not played Isaac in a, in a while. I was green mode streaking and then uh, played through Wild Frost and then played through Bellatro, Um which is my yeah. current. Gary, should we just should we do some Bellatro jokers in here amongst the monsters? Probably. Like I, I have too many serious things to say about these jokers. <laughs> Oh boy! Um, I haven't yeah. played. You know, what? I've been playing against the storm again. I really like against. Oh, the storm. I I would like to check that out. Um, that looks good to me. I like uh Frostpunk, and uh, yeah, that game is such a. It's like a Frostpunk thing. It's a roguelike Frostpunk thing that Cole won't play because he doesn't like how it looks, and that's fine. Like everybody has their own aesthetic preferences, but I was just very sure. surprised to hear that because there are so few Frostpunk lights out there, and that game doesn't look like anything to me. Yeah, like it just looks like it, it looks, just, like, it, it looks like it looks like Warcraft three to me, basically. Yeah, like it's like it is not a very strongly aesthetic game. Yeah, exactly. Like it just looks like a video game. Like these are just assets here. Like it would be really, very easy just, to wireframe. It's just uh, a really decent way to spend an hour and then have finished a level. Yeah, that's uh, yeah. I need, I need to try that. That looks like good to you me. build a little economic engine, uh, and then uh, they're like, "Yep, you finished. Uh, this town will now be destroyed." I gotta get cool into that. There's nothing he likes more than building economic engines. Gary, I think we can do it if we like it. You, you get him at Milwaukee and I'll get him in his dreams. Okay. <laughs> Perfect. Ah, a Freddy Tontine. Um, the you, cohort, Freddy got fingered? Freddy did get fingered. Hey, hey, hey. Uh, I've heard about going digital, but going digital? Oh, <laughs> Freddy. Gary, what pranks are you going to do on Cole at, uh, when you see him in Milwaukee? Uh, Boy, probably lay down in separate rooms and look at our phones. That old prank okay. uh, that we do a lot. Um, Gary, this seems like a real op. You only see Cole like once a year. This seems like a really twice. good opportunity to do some pranking. I'm not a big prank guy. You know, you may not have noticed that. Uh, I, I have a hard time coming up with good ideas for pranks. And one thing that is true about me is I'm not a good liar. Okay. Um, so I uh, and a lot of pranks involve like tricking somebody into something. Gary, I just, yeah. I've just been thinking a lot about the impractical jokers, you know? Yeah. Uh, People love or, those guys. Like, I wake up every morning. about a constellation morning. joker, which is really overrated? Yeah, Gary, that's a, that's a Bellatro reference. And yes. it's, it's I, I agree, it's very, very overrated. But I think a lot about the impractical. Like, I, you know, I wake up every morning and I check the, the tracker, right? Yeah. The, the where are they now? for the impractical jokers. You need to, because if you don't know where they are, then any situation could be an impractical joker. They're very good, right? I like it when on Christmas Eve, the news actually mm -hmm. breaks to tell me the radar and show me where the impractical jokers are. Yeah. For there, for the kids. Uh, and, yeah. And sometimes they're in Russia and that makes me worried. Yeah. But, what are they uh, doing? Sabotage, impractically joking our election? Exactly. But Gary, you have to wake up every single morning. First thing I do, I say, thank you, God, for another day. 
Second thing I do, I go on the website, the tracker website, and I yep. just check, is there an impractical joker within 50 miles of me? Because if if you they see an impractical, yeah. they do, Gary, because yeah. otherwise I'll be out about, yep. I'll see a wallet on the ground, or I'll see a spicy plate of nachos, and I'll think, yeah. mm, yum, 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 nachos. or yeah, yeah. yum, yum, yum. Yeah. And then you're sitting there chewing on that wallet and it turns out it's a fake wallet made of chocolate it's, and you look like a fucking idiot. Because Big like, Sal got me again. He, I know. Big Sal has gotten me four times and they won't put me on the show any of the times because as soon as he gets me, I scream, fuck! And they uh, go, we can't, do, we can't use it. Discord uh, silenced that because it was too loud. <laughs> it was me yelling fuck, buddy. Okay. okay. Uh, the, uh, <laughs> you, I, I need you to change your Discord settings to I let more of I, me through. <laughs> I don't think I have a setting, but you know, if he does, uh, get you a fifth time, yeah. you become little Sal. I, that's what I'm worried about, Gary. Cause yeah. I got a lot of, I got a the lot Sal tied up in this Will Hughes identity. You I really do. You. you seem to love it. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, um, yeah. But you, what if you were one of the smaller jokers? What if you're a wee joker gets an extra malt every time you play a two? Gary, um, you fucking tell me if you were big Sal, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I I would certainly tell you I'm a bad liar, which is something that a good liar would say. It really? Yeah, uh, absolutely. The, you know, but it, it Gary, is, you got to uh, fucking tell me if you're an impractical joker's joke. Yeah, no, I would. I'd, I'd certainly. Yeah. Um, sure. I'd let, let you know. Yeah, this point. has been basically the Gary Butterfield decade of my life. And if it's all been just impractical <laughs> jokers, I'm really fucked. I, that would make me very sad for something about you that makes me very melancholy. <laughs> <laughs> like if I just like our entire 10 year friendship was just an uh, impractical jokers on you. That makes me sad. Oh uh, man, but you got to check the website because they keep fucking getting me. And then yeah. they keep you, an app. The show. You can get an app that will just let you know when they're nearby. You get a notification. Oh, yeah. It's called a uh, impractical alert uh, that pops up. You get a, a loud text. Cause I keep, I, I keep, I want to be on the show. Right. Yeah. Cause like, because they keep getting me, but I can't help it. I just scream. Fuck. Uh, and then they're, and like, they're like, yep. can't use it. Can't use it. Can't use it. This is another joke for nothing. The practice joke. And then they have to do their whole refractory period before they impractically joke somebody else. And then sometimes I see, I watch the show and I see him do it to another person. The same one that got me like, uh, they fall down the manhole and break their leg and they're yeah. like, ha ha ha. And the, that person for some reason has amazing self-control and doesn't scream. Fah! Yeah. And they break their legs in, in human Waste is where they break their legs as well. Yeah. Uh, which makes it worse. Yeah, I think it's a compound fracture, Gary. The poop's getting yeah. in the bone. Yeah. That's a, you know what I think about a lot, Gary, uh, when it comes to poop, uh, <laughs> you know how you, how you get, uh, it's a good, like it's a good start to a sentence, man. <laughs> every once in a while you wipe your ass too hard or too much. Uh -huh. And like, you know, you have some kind of cut, you know, there, how does that ever heal when it's constantly being exposed to shit? Gary, I don't think we're as uh, susceptible to shit as okay. we like to think we are. I, th I mean, I think you have to be right because I've certainly like I've had, you know, uh, anal fissure before. Like I have my assholes blood before uh, the uh, An so anal fissure Stevens. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, he so really had... regret. He really regrets anal short circuit. <laughs> the uh, yeah, he was in brown face the entire time. Yeah. Uh, I mean, everybody down there is in brown face. Uh, that, that was the joke. Okay. Um, sorry. The, uh, I'm okay. sorry, Gary. It's okay. I didn't mean it. Um, I had the, in your hat. Uh, it's, it's okay. Uh, but yeah, I think you're right. It just, it's very counterintuitive to think that you can just shit into an open wound and have it be okay. You know, maybe it's sterile like you're in. We just don't, they don't advertise it. I, I don't know, Gary. You've asked a really <laughs> good question. Thank I you. think probably maybe they put more white blood cells down there. Huh? That would to, be a good because they okay. know it's where the poop is. That would be smart. That'd that, be real smart. My, that might be the thing that converts me to Carman's side with intelligent design. Like if our white blood cells are based around how much where there's like extra poop because it needs to be there to fight it off. Yeah. You know? Gary, can I confess something to you? Yeah. That impractical jokers bit I did for my wife yesterday. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> did you were you just trotting around to see? I uh, felt like my energy was flagging a little bit. And I thought about a funny thing I'd done uh, yeah. yesterday where I just made my wife listen to me ramble conspiracy theories about the impractical <laughs> jokers. Sure. Uh, and about my deep worries that the impractical jokers are following me around. How, um, how would you rate my reaction to it, uh, to your wife's? Uh, 
more engaged, certainly. <laughs> okay. That's, hey, I'll take it. <laughs> the, um, uh, I'll take it. We have one more I monster just, to do today. I just do improv at home. Uh, I have a care. I, 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 Gary, I don't know what to do with these characters, man. <laughs> you need another outlet. I might need another outlet because someone yeah. needs to meet uh, Beverly Lobster Manos. Okay. <laughs> which a is a character I do who is a, uh, she's a six foot tall lobster who works as a dental hygienist. Okay. I like lobsters would be great dental hygienist. Like they're well, always picking things up with their little claws and stuff. Gary, do you want to talk to Beverly Lobster Manos for a minute? Let me see what time it is. <laughs> 15 minutes on the Okay. Clock. We got, we got 10 minutes. Yeah. Uh, bring out Beverly. Hello, I'm Beverly Lobstermanos, and yes, before you ask, I'm single and a six foot tall lobster. You speak really, you speak really well for a lobster. That's an incredibly insulting thing to say to anyone as the first thing you say to them. No, you, I was just saying. Oh, am, so, arti- am I articulate? Am I your lobster friend now? Yeah, no, I, well, I'm on lots of nitrous. We're at the dentist's office, so I'm, forgive me, my filters are yeah. off. Hey. Forgiveness is divine, but I'm a bit of a devil. <laughs> <laughs> hey, watch uh, the claws. Oh, hey, go nuts. Go ahead, get in here, Bubby. <laughs> don't don't call me Bubby. We're not on that kind of basis. <laughs> well, I like I'm on so much nitrous right now. Everyone's my Bubby. <laughs> you said that. We haven't given you any yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, I took a bunch of the parking lot. Like it, it's just. I didn't say you I, didn't I, I hate that little coffee stand. That girl in that bikini just keeps giving people nitrous. Yeah, no. I, well, you get to see, like, you go in the bikini coffee stand and yeah. you ask for the double double. Yeah. Uh, and no, that's I what know. The, yeah. It's a, it's a little po- code that we I got. I party. Out. Yeah. I party. You party. Hey, do you want, after this, you know, you're single. Do you want, oh shit, I'm not. I'm on nitrous. Oh. I'm on nitrous. I'm on nitrous. Uh, but I got some friends. Do you know Riff? Uh, do you want to go and do some nitrous? After this? What? Hold on. Are you outing Riff from, from Kingdom of Loathing <laughs> as a nitrous addict? No, no. Okay. It's somebody who's single who might want to date a lobster. Gary, do you not know what a straight man is? <laughs> <laughs> Why are you trying to go bigger and weirder than... You fucking asshole. I'm like, oh, I have a character who's a talking lobster. You're like, I can go bigger than that. I just thought it was funny. Do you know yeah, Riff no. is a funny thing to ask to a talking lobster and I did it? I'm just saying, like, I came in with a comic premise and you're I, like, you know, Will, what if I'm an infidelist you've done nitrous that to me addict? Is infinite? Yeah, <laughs> there are more times like you've done Lodge that to me. Symphony? There are more times you've done that to me than there are stars in the sky. Uh, Gary, so, I just made a they might be giants I know, I reference appreciate for that. you. I appreciate it. Fuck, you just killed Beverly Lobster Manos. Amazing. <laughs> and her She's down in scary. the puggy hole now. <laughs> no. I, can, I, can I come to this it. show with these characters who, I, who make me laugh, and then they run into the thresher. What did I do? I just thought it was funny. <laughs> yeah. If I... Oh, boy. Well, um, maybe we can reignite uh, Beverly through the Everything to Guppy brand new Playboy Post role-playing mud. I would get what <laughs> we start a, a play by post, like a, a mud online where you play by post, like a message board and you can be Beverly. Oh, sure. Like, uh, yeah. in the, uh, the John Darnell book. Yeah. Or like red dragon in like the real versions of it. Yeah. 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 Well, you can do that, Gary. Oh, what's cohort do. Oh, uh, the cohort, uh, is, uh, it acts very similarly to monstro, the mini monstro, you know, or no, this is the big one. Uh, it's a it's a big bloody yeah, monster. Yeah, this is a big guy. Yeah, this is basically uh, a mini boss. Yep, uh, hops towards you, and you either can hork a big projectile that splits into eight projectiles, or cough up a burst of monster style uh, projectiles. Projectiles, but uh, they turn into uh, globin goo, and it makes uh, four little globin goos upon death. That yeah, will so it into just globins. basically this is a big jump around guy that then explodes into a ton of monsters. And he's uh, continuing the tradition of like Grand Falloon, you know, of, mm-hmm. of funny, cool names for a monster that's just actually a bunch of monsters stuck together. Yeah. Uh, you know, from uh, Castlevania. Oh. Uh, this one, not a Vonnegut reference, best as I know. No, I don't think Cohort is, you know. Uh, hello, I am Cohort. It's, it's, a, it's not as catchy and cool of a name. 
you know, but luckily names never come up on this uh, in terms of the monsters. I didn't know the name of almost any of these. We should make a mod that pops all the names on. I th- I'm sure such thing exists, but what a nightmare <laughs> for monsters. Yeah. Do, 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 Probably do. be pretty bad for the, for the UI. Yeah. If I'm trying to think of how many monsters I knew the name of before we went into this, it's like five. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. It's, it's something pretty ridiculous. Charger, Globin. I knew those. Yeah, um, host. Yeah. The host, Boomfly. Boomfly, Boomfly. Yep. Uh, you know, and then, yeah, boy. And then just like fly and, and I, spider and shit. But like, that's not. I exciting. probably could have inferred Red Bloom, Boomfly if I was really trying. Yeah, the variants. Yeah. Or Drown Boomfly. Like, we could probably figure those out. But like those. The variants weird... like in Deadpool? Yes. The time variants. Yeah. The upcoming Deadpool 3. Featuring um, Tom Wamsgans from Succession. Oh, nice. Who's he play? Uh, I don't know. Some TVA guy. Oh, okay. Gotcha. He's all over the trailer. Ah, I see. Yeah. I still got to watch Loki. Um, excited. Deadpool 3. Yeah, that's um, all right. should, uh, you haven't seen it. I mean, that's all right. Um, I said it looks all right. Oh, it looks all right. Okay. Uh, what should people do if they like the show, Will? contemplate ryan reynolds for a while just like yeah are we he seems like he needs it really bad right our liking he's he's one of the sweatier uh performers i think in terms of wanting us to like him and it comes through you know like i like those deadpool movies i watch those liked him just fine you love to and welcome then, someone to Wrexham. uh well i haven't watched welcome to Wrexham. i think jeremy likes it. i think jeremy said it was pretty good but i watched uh free guy for work for adaptation to get decay. And it is one of the sweatiest like performances I've ever seen in my life. Sure. Uh, he, it, it is, it brings all of that Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds ness absolutely to the fore, uh, of just like, boy, yeah, this person has a pathological need to be liked or they'll die. It's like speed, but for being liked or crank crank. If I get fewer than 4,000 likes per minute, I die. Uh, Gary, if people like the show, they can uh, go to patreon.com slash duckfeedtv. And I want to remind you, Patreon is not meant to be a transactional arrangement. It just means you like what we do and want us to make more of it. Yeah, thank you uh, for saying that. That's great. I agree. I saw people, uh, honest to God, saw people complaining about the Max Fun thing. Made me mad. And I was like, no, this is not supposed to be a transactional thing. Making fun of you bringing up Max Fun on here? Or bringing no, no, fun no, of Max no, Fun no, on? I, okay, got you. Got you, got yeah. you. Um, I yeah, saw other no, people it's... be like, oh, we only get one episode of bonus content. It's like, fuck off. Anyway. Uh, yeah, it's, it's not you... what it's about. It's that's that. Yeah. With you. I'm, I'm back on board. I like Max Fun again. Um, the uh, you're right. All right. Uh, you can also uh, leave a rating and review like this one left by Red Lion 5 on Podcast Addict. This is a great podcast. Thank you for the hours of super fun moments and the joy you have given my family. My mom has listened for as long as I can remember, which is not very long, but still, this is an amazing podcast. Happy Candle Nights, Merry Christmas, Happy Kwanzaa, sorry if I spelled that wrong, Happy Hanukkah, and have a good holiday if there are anyone I did not list because those are the only ones that I know about. Happy New Year. And that was a five-star review for my brother, my brother, and me. Oh, hey. <laughs> yeah. The, uh, oh, their mom listens as well. This, um, this person does, yes, I didn't read the next one, which is a one-star review that says, all brothers but no men, which I think you left. Oh, the Langton. Uh, what does it say? Langton. I don't think I left that. I don't. I don't have my iTunes login. I, this, I is at, this is Podcast Addict. I, I sir, I've never logged into Podcast Addict. Um, that's not me, bro. Okay, I didn't actually think you did. I was just okay. being kind of fun. Uh, I, I just tell. think it's fun. From now on, instead of reading Guppy reviews, I'll read my brother, and my brother, and me reviews. Oh, was that a review for my brother, and my brother, and me? Or was it the from? big long one I read? The big long one I read, yes, was that was the oh, joke. I thought you said it was from my brother and brother. No. And me. That was the name of the person who left the review. <laughs> no, that was a that was a review of my brother, my brother. Ah, and me I, I see. Read. Well, now I don't like it again. I'm back against yeah. those guys. Um, yeah. <laughs> I, I'm back full circle. Thank you for bringing me back how I was. Thank you for yeah, leaving also me. the all brothers but no men. Why would that be a review of us? I don't know. Like, why are any <laughs> reviews of us reviews of us? Like, they don't necessarily make tons of sense every time sometimes they're referencing things but they're things i've forgotten so i don't Gary, know do you want to now i feel bad I, I thought that'd be a fun bit but no here we go okay uh the, here's one from our old pal barton funk and this one is for 
uh, whatever our show is that isn't My Brother, My Brother, and Me. What episode of Retronauts was Will on? I genuinely like to hear what he and Bob have to say about FF16 and that episode's topic, obviously. I sometimes call Guppy the Crawling Podcast and imagine Will and Gary as Elder Gods, five out of five. I think you read that one last week. Motherfucker. But now your episode's out. Your Retronauts episode is out. Yeah, it is. Although so, this, is, this is coming out in two weeks, so it's been out for a while. <laughs> pre-taped, uh, pre-taped call-in show stuff. Gary, uh, can you rate how chaotic I was this episode? I feel like it was two. Fa- fairly uh, a two out of how many? No, two is in T-O-O. I, yeah. um, fairly chaotic. I'm feeling a little bit bad about shutting down your Beverly. Uh, no, Gary, no. No, 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 <laughs> Gary. <laughs> I didn't mean to not be a, a straight man for that. I think that is a funny character. I just thought of jokes and was saying them because in guppy mode. Gary, I one of the characters I play sometimes on this is oh, okay. I was gonna give like a thoughtful explanation. Can I tell you what the <laughs> labels that release all of Carmen's albums are called? <laughs> yes, please. All right, first one: Clesis, then two on priority, then two on Myrrh, Benson, Sparrow. <laughs> Benson, Everland, Sparrow, Everland, Sparrow, Everland, Sparrow, Corbin, a lot, Ty Scott, word, word, and then two on Norway Avenue. <laughs> Murr. Murr. I love that. I love that so much. No ghost. No ghost. Except for the Holy Ghost. <laughs>